Great day, students, and welcome to day six of Lab Miss. Now, ladies and gentlemen, today's lab is an extra special one. You, As you can see right now, we are in a plane. We are in the air. And today's lab has something to do with us getting down. Now, other than landing, what would be the safest way for me to get down? You're right, skydiving or a using a parachute. But how do parachutes work? Well, ladies and gentlemen, today's lab is all about parachutes. So I need to get to my lab quickly. So let's put on the parachute and let's go. All right, well, it feels really good to be back in the lab today with each and every one of you. Now, today we're gonna to be studying the science behind skydiving and parachutes. So first, let's read an epic book on parachutes. Jump, have you ever dived into a pool? Some people like to dive into the air. Skydiving is an extreme sport. People who skydive jump out of airplanes. They free fall to the ground using a parachute to slow them down. Skydiving is an exciting sport. Did you know? Most skydivers jump out of an airplane around 14,000 feet, 4,267 meters above the ground. Skydiving's early days. Skydiving started long before airplanes were invented. People used parachutes to jump from tall buildings hundreds of years ago. In 1797, a Frenchman named André Jacques Garnerin used a parachute to jump out of a hot air balloon. He jumped about 2,000 feet, 610 meters to the ground. Did you know? Leonardo da Vinci was an Italian painter and inventor. Way back in 1483, he sketched a cloth parachute in his notebook. Da Vinci thought people could use this parachute to escape from burning buildings. Platform. The first parachute jump from an airplane was made in 1912. In 1914, Georgia Tiny Broadwick became the first woman to jump out of an airplane. Early skydivers used parachutes attached to the plane. Then, they cut the ropes to fall from the plane. In 1919, Leslie Irvin tested a new kind of parachute. This parachute had a ripcord. He jumped out of a plane and pulled the ripcord after a few seconds. Many people call Irvin the inventor of skydiving. Did you know? Until Leslie Irvin did it, people did not think it was possible to jump with a parachute that was not attached to a plane. They thought the skydiver would faint before he or she could pull the ripcord. Equipment Skydivers use several different pieces of equipment when they jump. The most important piece is the parachute. Skydivers have two parachutes. One is called the main parachute. The other is the reserve parachute. Skydivers use the reserve parachute if the main parachute does not work. Skydivers also need an altimeter. An altimeter tells skydivers how high they are in the sky. When the skydiver gets to a certain height, it's time to pull the ripcord and release the parachute. Camera, helmet, harness, altimeter, jumpsuit. Did you know? Parachutes come in different shapes and sizes, depending on what type of skydiving they are used for. Skydivers wear jumpsuits. These jumpsuits fit tightly. A tight fit helps the skydiver move more quickly through the air. Skydivers wear gloves to keep their hands warm. A harness holds the parachutes to the body. Skydivers also wear helmets and goggles. A helmet protects the skydiver's head. It's important to stay safe, both in the air and during landing. Shields and goggles. Skydivers wear goggles or helmets that have face shields. Goggles and shields protect the skydiver's face. They also keep wind and dust out of the skydiver's eyes. Learning to dive. Skydivers must take training classes before they take to the sky. During these classes, they learn how to use their equipment. They learn all the safety rules. Next, skydivers do ground training. They jump off of low towers. They learn how to hold and move their bodies in the air. They also learn how to land safely. Finally, it is time to go up in the air. Usually, a novice skydiver will do a static line jump or with an instructor. The instructor helps the skydiver do everything right. Later, the skydiver can jump all alone. Did you know? Some novices start with a static line jump. A metal rope holds the parachute to the airplane. The line opens the parachute when the skydiver jumps. Steering and turning. The parachute is not just something to help the skydiver land. It also helps the skydiver fly. A skydiver steers a parachute by pulling on control lines. These lines turn the parachute left or right. 
Some skydivers use their parachutes for target practice. They try to land in a certain spot on a field. It takes careful steering and turning to land on the right spot. In some competitions, the landing target is a tiny disc just over 1 inch, 2.54 centimeters across. In competition, skydivers earn points for landing on the target. Sky surfing and freestyling. Some skydivers have taken this sport to an even more exciting level. These skydivers actually surf in the air. A sky surfer attaches a board to his or her feet. The skydiver uses the board to surf in the air, just like a surfer uses a surfboard to ride the waves. The first standing sky surf was performed by French skydiver Joel Cruciani in 1987. He used a regular surfboard with snowboard foot bindings. Freestyling is another exciting twist on skydiving. A freestyler performs different acrobatic moves during freefall. Freestyle teams have at least two members. One member does the moves. The other member films the skydiver using a helmet-mounted camera. Did you know? Freestylers can perform a great number of acrobatic moves during their short time in midair. Team formations. You can skydive by yourself. However, some people skydive in teams. This sport is called formation skydiving. Formation skydiving teams usually jump from a height of 12,500 feet, 3,810 meters. Members link hands as they free fall through the sky. Team members make patterns such as stars and circles. Finally, the divers let go and pull their ripcords. Canopy formation is another type of team skydiving. Canopy formation teams open their parachutes right away. Then, they link together. Their colorful parachutes look beautiful in the sky. Formation teams have only 30 to 50 seconds to complete their formations before they have to release their parachutes. Whew. Back in the lab, ladies and gentlemen, and I am ready for today's experiment. Now, if you notice the first question behind me after listening to the book from Epic, which was incredible, the question I have for you is, would you ever skydive? Hmm, it's a great question. I think in order for us to make a decision, we have to sort of learn about the science behind skydiving. So, for today's lab, we're asking the question, how could we build the best parachute? Hmm, I've got a couple of materials here that we're going to be using and testing. And ladies and gentlemen, one of these may actually work. I'm, it'd be a lab miss miracle, wouldn't it? So we're going to be testing these today, but let's first talk about the science behind skydiving. Now, as we have learned from the rockets and from all the other experiments, uh, even last week when we did air bended, we know that wind is pretty powerful and so is the forces that surround everything that's in the air. If we want to review a little bit, we, with a rocket, remember we have lift, we have thrust, we have gravity, and we have drag. Now, with a rocket, we don't want a lot of drag, but we want a lot of lift. Hmm. I wonder if we could ever have lift and drag kind of working together. Well, let's take a look at our parachute. Now, as you know, we have one force that is acting upon this parachute and this little guy right here. And we know what that force is. We know the force is going to be gravity. And gravity is pulling it down, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the problem with that is, well, First, let's talk about what's good about that. We're gonna be coming back down to Earth, which is great. But when you're up in an airplane, gravity is gonna be a little bit stronger and be pulling you down at a speed that, well, trust me, we never wanna jump out of a plane without a parachute. So what we need to do <clears throat> is find the force that counteracts or the counter force of gravity. Well, we know that that is lift. We want something to lift the parachute and cause it to slow down, which is also drag. So we want to cre create a parachute that has enough lift and enough drag to sort of counter force or counterbalance the amount of gravity. We do not want to come crashing to the earth. We want to float nicely down to the earth. So if we look here, What's happening is once the parachute is deployed, 
the air is catching underneath the material of the parachute and causing it to slow down. Well, there's the drag and trying its hardest to lift up. There are our counter forces. But at the same time, gravity is pulling it down. So our goal with this lab, ladies and gentlemen, is to create something that has enough drag and has enough lift to balance the gravity. So the materials I have today, now for these ones and the ones that we saw in the book, cloth is the best material. Well, we're not gonna use cloth today. We're gonna see if there's another design that we can use to build a parachute. So I have plastic bags. I have, of course I got duct tape. Uh, I have our little paper snowflakes. Hmm, let's see if those will work. And uh, I have a balloon. Um, I have some cardboard. I wonder if we can use all these materials to build a better parachute. Well, we don't know unless we try. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start building. So the first thing we're gonna use is the target bag here. It is big and it is wide. So that looks like it's gonna work really, really well. And to be our test subject, we got Kylo here that's going to help us uh, sort of simulate what it would be like to be a person using this parachute. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some string and we're going to attach Kylo to our boop, to our bag. So all I have done is tied some string on the ends of the handles of the bag. Let's see if you can back and see it. And I have attached, well, he just came detached, but we're gonna attach Kylo to the base and tie it to the strings and see what happens. So let's go to the other part of the lab and test this out. Now the next part of the experiment, well, let's use a balloon. We know balloons are light. They kind of float a little bit. Maybe it has enough lift to just drop Kylo gently to the ground. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach Kylo to the balloon and let's go test, see if that works. Hmm. Now, how can I use cardboard to make a parachute? Oh, I know. With a little bit of duct tape, we have created a sort of a, a box thing and I put some holes in it so we can tie the string and we're gonna see if this one can get enough lift to, well, lift Kylo. So he's sight nice and safe when he lands. So, so far we have plastic, we've used plastic bags. We have used cardboard. Uh, we have used a balloon. What else could we use? I've got it. A snowflake. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach this snowflake. Now you may be asking yourself, well, it's got holes in it. Well, we don't know until we try. Uh, when I see snowflakes, they don't just fall straight down. They sort of glide down, don't they? Maybe a snowflake would act as a great parachute. We don't know unless we, you get it, unless we try. So let's go ahead and try the snowflake. Now, as you see, some of these worked, some of these didn't work. Some of them worked miserably. And I definitely wouldn't want to be wearing some of these for uh, if I was ever jumping out of a plane. But did we answer our question? How could we build the best parachute? Well, I think we solved the problem. And I think we solved our answer there. Um, if we're ever skydiving, we definitely want cloth. But there are some other solutions. And ladies and gentlemen, there may be some other solutions out there that you want to test, that you want to try. I highly recommend it, ladies and gentlemen. You never know until you try. So go out there and find something to build a parachute out of. Now, make sure you have a Kylo to test it instead of you. We're not using our parachutes for ourselves. 
So like I said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me for day seven. And I cannot wait to see each and every one of you tomorrow.